Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cecilia Campillo. I'm here to present a program about TCE. This program is brought to you uh, by the El Pueblo Neighborhood Center Clinic, El Pueblo Clinic, that is located uh, at 101 West Irvington Road. As we have been talking in past programs with regards to TCE, uh, we are also bringing uh, people from the community that are involved in many of the issues. And today's guests are uh, Mr. Tom Stubblefield, who is a uh, professor emeritus from the Department of Agriculture Economics, University of Arizona. And we also have with us Ursula Hernandez, a member of this community. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Stubblefield, and thank you for being here today. It was my pleasure. Thank you. And, um, as a resident of the Southside community, you've been involved in the issues pertaining to TCE. You have many titles as member of the UCAB, member of the HAB, past president actually of, of uh, the ha Health Advisory Board and now current uh, co-chair co of the Community Advisory Board, uh, Unified Community Advisory Board. Can you tell us a little bit about first and including the TC subcommittee. Can you start with TC subcommittee, explain how you got involved with that? Well, the TC subcommittee of the Department, of the Pima County Department of Health is not being very active and hasn't been for a year or two, but one night I wandered into a meeting and uh, Matt Herrera was the uh, community co-chairman and I asked the question about what it would take for the people in the local community to have more confidence in the Tucson Water Department. And uh, out of that, I became, uh, Manny appointed me as the community um, representative to be a liaison with the Tucson Water Department. And then I became uh, involved in seeing some, overseeing some surprise tests made at the water that was be, had been treated at the TARP plant. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, as a member of this mon monitoring team, what is it precisely what, uh, what you do in this surprise te water testing that is being done? Well, well, what we do is that we obtain the uh, necessary uh, bottles to, obtain, to, to, to have the water or to take the water samples in. And without the two city of Tucson or, uh, knowing uh, what, when we're going to uh, come to see them, we come out and say, hey, we're here to take a test. Uh, let's get to work going on it. And so we sit and take uh, the uh, test that's needed to determine what the quality of the water is. And this, then uh, after the uh, samples are taken, we take a, sa a sample to a independent laboratory to have it uh, tested. And the Tucson Water takes their samples to their laboratory and after it's over with, we compare the results of the two tests. And this is to check the uh, TCE parts per billion, is this correct? Well, it, it, it really what it's for is to check to see that the Tucson Water Department is taking accurate, uh, making accurate uh, analysis mm -hmm. of, of the uh, 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 TCE in the water that has been treated at the tar plant. Now this is measured, uh, the measurement of that is in five-tenths of a part per bi uh, billion. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, in this, uh, at that level, they cannot detect any, anything lower than that. Mm -hmm. They're not able to detect TCE in, in, in lower uh, than five-tenths parts per billion. In all of our tests, we've got what you call a non- um, uh, well, anyway, it shows no, no, no contamination. No detect. No detect. That's mm -hmm. what I want to say. No detect. And so that safe drinking water that's being currently sent to the north par northern uh, part of the city, right, to the well, northwest the, part of the city. Well, the, the water is being sent to uh, two different areas. One area is uh, west of uh, the area uh, at uh, uh, Grant Road and uh, Silver Bell. The other one is uh, the area north, uh, just north of the Speedway, about Fourth or Fifth uh, Fourth Avenue, in that area there, mm -hmm. and these the two areas been sent, that's being sent to. 
Now we have two representatives, one from each area, mm -hmm. that come in and see the tests made, okay. uh, see, see, see the samples taken, and and and, and then they go they go with me t uh, to take the samples to the uh, independent lab. Mm -hmm. Very good and very important task that you have, Mr. Stubblefield. Well, I might say that out of We've made taking 15 surprise tests. Mm -hmm. Out of this, we have not had any detect. Uh, out of, and this has been a, a, starting in 1994. Very good, very good. And that's good news for our community because well, we all want to be sure that we're drinking safe, uh, clean, and, uh, clean and safe water. Yeah, but I want to make one thing clear. Mm -hmm. Somebody used to say abundantly clear or something like that, I think, that we don't receive, we don't drink the water that comes out of the tarp plant. The people, and as you say, in other areas of Tucson, although about 10% of the total water drunk in Tucson comes from that plant. Right. Uh, our side of town, as we understand, is receiving water from Aver Valley. Yes. Right. So it's an exchange type of uh, water program that we're having right now. Um, as a member of the UCAB, uh, and can you ex explain what uh, that acronym stands for? And as co-chair of that uh, committee, what is it that you do? Well, the acronym or the name is the Unified Community Advisory Board to the International Airport uh, Superfund Site. And what the, the uh, uh, possible responsible parties, people that have, uh, people, excuse me, organizations that have uh, uh, could have contributed at least to the DCE contamination. Uh, they, whenever they have to come up with the methods of removing the TCE from the underground aquifer, mm -hmm. and in doing this, uh, uh, they in these methods of removal, they present them to the public. It's by law that they have to present the methods to the public. Mm -hmm. Now, originally, we had a situation where all of the uh, PRPs, as we call them, uh, had, had to do it individually. Well, the Unified, Advi 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 Unified Advisory Community Can Board mm -hmm. is set up so that the four or five PRPs that might be involved. Can you name? Uh, can you uh, briefly give us the names of the PRPs so well, people can understand? Well, there's, there's the uh, uh, Tucson Airport Authority. Mm -hmm. There's Hughes. Uh, Oh, uh, Air Force Hughes, mm -hmm. oh, no, that's Air Force uh, Raytheon, Ray, Raytheon now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, Air National Guard, there's uh, Burr Brown, and uh, then there's a couple of people, uh, new ones that's coming involved just recently. Uh, oh, uh, with Donald uh, Douglas? Donald Douglas and uh, the other one, can you? Uh, I can't uh, remember at this moment, but yeah. there is another uh, another one. That's, that's another involved. party. And this is lately in, in our newspapers. Yes, this, this, yes. uh, but they, they, when they have a, a proposed method of treatment mm -hmm. to remove the TCE from the underground water, and the, the responsibility of these, peop of these organizations is to restore that water, the underground water, to its original uh, oh, purity, original safety. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, so it's, to bring it back to drinking water uh, level, and this is their, uh, what their, responsibility, their responsibility is. And they come before us and tell us how they're doing this on, on, on various uh, oh, uh, contamination, contaminated areas. Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to take, uh, in your estimate, quite a lengthy time before this is uh, completed? All well, the cleansing of the water and the abatement in the soil process, uh, cleanup process? I don't think we have time to get involved in all of this at this program. Mm -hmm. But we have one site that the uh, EPA has decided mm -hmm. that it's not going to be possible to clean it up. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to monitor that two or three, four hundred years, maybe. And uh, maybe in, uh, that we never will be able to get this thing uh, uh, clean. It may become some new method to uh, that will respond to treatment to it. But right now, they don't have a method that they can clean it up. I have one question that I'll come back and ask you uh, that is tying into okay. this conversation that we're having, Mr. Doublefield. Uh, right now, we're, we're going to turn to Ursula. Our next guest, Ursula, is a member of this community, of the Southside community. She's also a patient of the TCE program at El Pueblo Clinic. 
the TC program at El Pueblo Clinic, as you know, is uh, vigilant in the health uh, issues pertaining to TCE and members of the community that feel their health was impacted because of TCE. I'd like to uh, introduce Ursula and welcome her to the program. Thank you for having me here, Cecilia. And uh, I just wanted to hear from you as a resident of the South Side. Um, how do you feel about the en enormous issue that's taken place over these many years, Ursula? You're a young woman, but you have been involved. Yes, I have, and not just myself, my whole family. And it's very sad. It's very sad to hear the symptoms and the illnesses that everyone has. The uh, TCE contamination has caused a great deal of uh, illnesses, not only in the elderly people, but the youth. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's my understanding that the studies that were made, 90% uh, of the victims are going to experience uh, leukemia, different forms of cancer eventually within their life. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons I am very grateful for the clinic because it is available for those victims. It's available to have uh, the medication provided to have the uh, staff and the doctors and the physicians that are able to care for them. And I think it's been a great help. Mm -hmm. uh, we would hope that this is a very positive uh, type of program that El Pueblo Clinic uh, took a very courageous step in, in addressing this issue and when it set up this program. Um, it, it's been in operation, as you know, for the past five years. I believe you've been a member of the, uh, as a patient, for about three years now, hasn't yes, it I been? Yes, I have. And um, what do you think of the service that we're providing, the health care, the referrals, and things that we, ha are, we at the clinic strive to do for our patients? In my case, the service has been very great. Um, I do, as you know, have a pre-existing problem, and it was caused by the TCE contamination which means it is very difficult to get insurance. And in order to uh, receive the type of health care that I need, TC Clinic, uh, El Pueblo Clinic has been a great help. Right. Uh, some of the um, things that uh, we've been addressing uh, for our patients is uh, referrals to specialty clinics that are becoming more costly each time. I believe you've experienced that. Uh, Ursula. Yes, I have. And um, we are uh, hoping that in the future uh, there will be money for that clinic, for the program, so that we can address um, those serious illnesses and the very costly testing that is, is needed for our patients. And uh, getting back to um, some of the questions that we had for you, um, uh, would you, what would do you believe what happened uh, if this program would no longer uh, be funded? Because you know, as you know, we've run into some funding issues and problems in the past. As a patient, I'm sure you must be concerned and you must worry uh, should we fall short of receiving funds at the clinic. Oh, that would be unfortunate. That would be just terrible. They think that uh, the victims, I don't know where they would go. Mm -hmm to receive this particular type of services. Exactly. Uh, how would they get treated? I'd also like to see um, a physician of, uh, that is specializes in the um, field of the environmental uh, at least look at the patients once a month. Mm -hmm. Environmental and occupational yes. medicine. Uh, those are very expensive. Uh, uh, doctors that w we would need to bring into a Pueblo and because of lack of funds it, it's not possible at this time but perhaps in the future we can accommodate our patients with such service but um, I thank you for for coming to today we'll get back to you before the program you. I, I want to get back to uh, Mr. Stubblefield on the question I had here uh, for you and uh, I was wondering do you believe that the um, PRPs will eventually try uh, to pull out of uh, their responsibility at any time. I don't think that the PRPs uh, it's legally for them for the pull out. Mm -hmm. What I'm more concerned about is that they will s approve a trust fund or something that's insufficient to handle the treatment of the 
uh, 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 the water, the underground water table. And as a result of this, get into a problem which we have to go back through uh, various uh, you know, uh, activities to get them back to so that they're financing it at, at an adequate basis. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let me give, give you back to go back to the uh, uh, example I had we talked about earlier. Uh, if this particular one site is not going to be ever uh, cleaned up, and it's as it was supposed to be in the uh, when the uh, Superfund site was set up. Superfund site was set up with the objective of uh, get all the water and underground water being uh, uh, cleaned to the point that it was drinkable or potable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what happens a uh, hundred years from now? Now, that may seem to be a uh, f uh, foolish question or so, but if this area is going to stay contaminated for the next hundred, two, three hundred years, who's going to who, who, who's going to have the money to make sure that the monitoring wells are are tested and that the uh, oh, uh, results are published so that the uh, the public will know what's going on, and unless we have the ad adequate funds to do this, and one of the things that I'm concerned about is that we get too short-sighted, and in, in the financing. Mm -hmm. How would you remedy that situation, uh, Mr. Stubblefield? Uh, you're knowledgeable in so many areas having to do with uh, the problem that we're well, experiencing. Well, I would have, uh, I would have uh, myself, whether it's feasible, whether it's legal or not, I would have a continuing uh, uh, financial responsibility that these PRPs would have to continue to uh, make money available to uh, for the treatment of the uh, water and for the monitoring of the quality of the water. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, would you like to see something uh, set aside as well for the health care of people that are living in our area and for generations that are also coming up with some of the well, problems that... Our problem is this, with the uh, old TCE uh, Superfund, TCE responsibilities. They don't have any legal responsibilities for the health of the people. This is a, is a big gap that's been uh, been allowed to exist. And only local funds are available to treat the people, such as Ursula here. Mm -hmm. And and so, uh, although the people that are involved in cleaning up the water was ones that were involved in contaminating it, they're not involved in helping with the health condition uh, problems that they created. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there, there's a debate uh, within the community regarding that very topic. A lot of people don't agree with, with that, but uh, that's for another, uh, another program and other people that we'll be bringing in to talk on this. Uh, but the, the question, if, there is, uh, if the PRPs don't feel responsible for the health of the community, why are the millions of dollars being spent for the cleanup of the water and soil? That's the question we're going to leave at and have somebody else answer uh, within the series of the programs that we'll be having. Um, and I really thank you for, for being here today. Uh, we're going to get back to Ursula and uh, just ask her in general how, as a young woman uh, with children, how would you uh, encourage or uh, try to educate the young people today about problems that we've experienced uh, and that in the future we hope uh, will not be there for, for generations to come? What is the, as a community member, how would you address that education of the kids and, and awareness? How, what plan would you use? Well, I would educate them as far as uh, trying to maintain a clean environment, mm -hmm. first of all, um, not only our water, but our air. And uh, Is this I through would school or, or through some kind of a course in school? Is it a responsibility in the home? It's a responsibility in the home as well as in the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in regards to what Mr. Stubblefield was talking about as far as the... Uh, the companies, the industries that were uh, responsible. I think that uh, bottled water should be, be provided for the schools because of the uh, time length 
the mm -hmm. cleanup is going to take. And, and I'll well, there, there was a, a double standard uh, years ago, uh, as I recall, in, in the Sunnyside School Districts where mm -hmm children that were being exposed directly to the uh, water uh, fountains and the TCE at that time that was that was flowing slowly but it was there, um, there uh, where teachers would bring in their own bottled water, bottled water yeah. and kids would be drinking from just the, uh, the fountains themselves so um, we have to do a lot of education uh, within the community the schools, the local schools, and this is throughout Tucson because certainly environmental problems like this can occur in any part of the of the city. And uh, I think within our school systems, uh, we also need to place some education uh, on this issue. What do you think, Mr. Stubblefield? You're looking at me like Well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at you just because I'm looking at you. But anyway, uh, the uh, I, I, just a little uh, old uh, uh, opening statement we're contaminated out there the water's contaminated due to ignorance the people that did it didn't know what they were doing and it wasn't until they found out what they was doing that they really uh, they didn't want to think about the cost of uh, correcting it and hadn't been for the EPA uh, we would still be fitting there, sitting here fighting about it mm -hmm. now that one thing we have is they're cleaning up the, that with the water environment but we surely haven't done anything about cleaning up the health problem. Is that the responsibility then locally with the health department? No, I think... Where, where does it rest? Uh, I think it's a... Pro it, since this is a result of a national... and uh, it, was, it was a result of an uh, effort to uh, arm our nation with airplanes and... Uh, and uh, oh, uh, uh, rockets and so forth for so far that it's the responsibility of the nation. I'm concerned, I believe, because it, the cheap uh, use of the cleaner that they use to clean up the parts on the, of the airplanes and so forth, which reduced the cost of building airplanes and so forth, was, it, was to the advantage of the total nation. And it's, it seems to me like that uh, through ignorance, which is no excuse, we have, been, we have caused the problem of uh, poor health and water contamination and so forth, that the, that the federal uh, government should be actually the one that's responsible to see that these, uh, this uh, health problem is, is straightened out. Mm -hmm. Would you then agree that uh, there is some responsibility then from some federal agency to fund uh, money to uh, help with some of these uh, community concerns? The well, health problems, for one. I, I, I would say very directly that I never have felt anything differently. Because it's, it seems like it's very unfortunate that we have to depend on the local uh, financing to treat these people mm -hmm. of health whenever the local situation wasn't at all involved in it. Exactly. Well, it was to the detriment of the community that uh, we suffered all the negative uh, impact on the south side. An area that an area that's always been impacted by uh, not only health problems but because of the low economics and poverty and uh, lack of uh, employment in the community, um, the um, disparity that has always been part of the uh, in here in, in in a poor area of town, and that occurs within um, all parts of the country where there's a poor. There's always the negative. Uh, I believe that um, the UCAB is doing a, a, a wonderful um, service to the community, local members of, of your organization, local members of the um, past uh, TCE Health Advisory Board, uh, members of the Tucsonas for past Tucsonas for a Clean Environment, members of the um, uh, clinic. Uh, the doctors that are addressing this uh, this problem, those are positives. Those are things that we need to continue doing here in Tucson. Just uh, pumping all this uh, information out to the community, giving, uh, reaching out and trying to help uh, our, our people that are living in these poverty pockets. If I may interrupt just a minute, I would think that we should be very, yeah. <coughs> oh, um, very happy with the fact that 
the local people have saw fit to finance the uh, health uh, treatment in spite of the fact that they really could not be called, said to be responsible for it. Absolutely. And you're one of those troops. You're in, the, you're in, in first line in those troops along with many, many people in the community that uh, have gotten involved, including Ursula's family, including uh, my family, including hundreds of families that support uh, this issue and continue to striving for our good uh, health care. Uh, our El Pueblo Clinic is uh, to be commended for the work it's doing. Um, we're all proud to be connected to El Pueblo Clinic. And we will continue um, to bring all the work that is needed in this community, especially where TCE uh, is concerned for the health and the benefit of our, our clients. Thank you for watching today's program, and we will uh, continue. Next week, our guest will be Raul Grijalva from the Board of Supervisors, who represents the South Side. And uh, uh, we are looking forward to having Raul uh, here. Uh, further down the line, we have our executive director, Mr. Hector Morales, that will be a guest in, in, at the show. We hope that the information we are bring, bringing to you is uh, beneficial and educational and interesting to you. If you have questions, call us at the clinic. Um, our telephone uh, will be shown on the screen. It's 746-8828. Uh, uh, if you have questions, I'll repeat that number. It's 746-8828. Uh, call us and see what you think of the program. If you have questions you want us to ask, let us have them. And thank you for watching, and see you next week. <laughs>